hello students today our topic is directional overcurrent relay as in previous lectures uh, we have discussed overcurrent relay and uh, in this lecture we will discuss in detail about directional overcurrent relay before we move further uh, about directional overcurrent relay uh, there is a phenomena uh, known as uh, method of discrimination uh, which is needed to be understand first uh, well if we talk about uh, discrimination so in fault clearance uh, a protective relay needs to be provided with information to enable it uh, to discriminate between fault conditions uh, within its uh, leg legitimate zone of operation for which tripping is required and external faults and healthy load currents for which tripping is not required uh, well uh, this is uh, that type of condition which we already uh, discussed when we start about relay uh, when we talk about selectivity and different other parameters and in method of discrimination uh, some information uh, must obviously uh, be derived from the available electrical quantities of current voltage and the phase angle between the measured uh, at the time of fault. Um, if we talk about uh, methods of discrimination, uh, there are three uh, basic methods uh, which we discuss in detail. Uh, number one is discrimination by time. Uh, number two is discrimination by current magnitude and uh, number three is uh, discrimination by uh, time and direction. We will discuss uh, each of these uh, with uh, followed by uh, small examples in next slide. In this slide uh, we discuss the first method that is uh, discrimination by time. Well, uh, in this uh, method, the basic idea is to add time lag feature to the controlling relays of a number of circuit breakers in the power system. Uh, the reason behind that, uh, so that the breaker or the breaker nearest to a fault on the system always trip first. Uh, as we know that uh, the timing is very important in any protection system because if the uh, breaker uh, didn't trick uh, didn't trip at right time so it will not benefit the system so uh, as you can see uh, in the figure uh, uh, show a simple radial line passing through a transformer station um, a b c and d at each uh, of which the outgoing line has a circuit breaker. Uh, suppose that uh, the protective systems applied to these breakers are uh, identical uh, and each is such that it will trip if transversed by 2000 ampere. Uh, just for the sake of example, you can see between C and D uh, if there is a fault uh, on that section um, and of course uh, the fault occurs when the current level increase uh, from 2000 ampere uh, so what will happen the breaker at a b and c will open and all supply beyond a will be lost so this is the condition which we don't want uh, in any uh, uh, system because if from one fault the whole system get collapsed then this is the most undesirable feature uh, that we uh, of course didn't want so uh, on the other hand suppose we add time lag features uh, to the protection systems such that after the existence of the fault the tripping is delayed uh, thus, for example, uh, we have mentioned, uh, for example, D had 
no delay uh, c has 0.4 uh, second uh, added delay b is 0.8 second and a is 1.2 second added delay this uh, this delay is uh, added by the uh, by ourselves so uh, having same condition uh, like the uh, we see in previous um, before adding time lag and now it is with uh, adding time lag so what will happen now again consider uh, the effect of a fault f uh, between the section c and d in the line section cd now the breaker uh, at c will open after uh, 0.4 seconds and will disconnect the fault before the breakers at a and b can trip Supply is thus maintained to A, B, and C. This is known as time discrimination. You just noted that uh, the 0.4 second step have been suggested in the time lags. An interval of this order is necessary to give the circuit breaker and its protective relays time to operate fully uh, before the next breaker with the longer time uh, can receive an impulse time to trip. Well, in simple words, we can say uh, that from a one single fault between a section like CD, the whole system didn't disturb at all. So uh, this is uh, one of the major uh, benefit of discrimination uh, by time. Uh, you can also uh, see that uh, in different industries, uh, we have the whole systems uh, working together. So just consider if there is a one fault at one section uh, and if the system, if the whole system get tripped. So is there a, a benefit uh, of a protective system? Of course not. So uh, this method uh, solve uh, this problem. Uh, well, we talk about discrimination by current magnitude. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, that this method is basically dependent upon current magnitude so discrimination can be obtained by recognizing the fault that falls in different parts of the power system uh, will cause fault currents of different magnitudes on account uh, of uh, different impedance between the sources and the points of the fault as we know that uh, when uh, fault current uh, occurs it have a magnitude uh, the magnitude can be very um, like uh, you have already calculated um, in power system analysis uh, we calculate uh, the fault currents uh, between two points so in this is the same case uh, in this suitable condition uh, with the protective relays of the various circuit breaker uh, set to trip at uh, suitably tapered current values uh, will ensure that uh, the breakers uh, near to the fault will trip and will leave other transfers uh, by the same uh, fault current undisturbed. Uh, thus, uh, supply will be maintained to those part of the system which are healthy. Uh, now, uh, you can see that uh, uh, the whole uh, idea behind this discrimination method is to uh, not to stop the whole system uh, on the name of protection uh, so we can also say that uh, a good protection is that uh, which will uh, discriminate uh, your faulty area uh, by uh, stopping uh, the smaller side of the system not the whole system because if the whole system uh, stop working then there is no need of uh, relaying mechanism because uh, uh, you stop the whole system. So uh, this is another method uh, like uh, you can discriminate uh, between different uh, current magnitudes and on the basis of that uh, current magnitude uh, the system can discriminate that uh, this part uh, will run or uh, this part will stop. Well, uh, the third one is uh, discrimination by time and direction. Uh, in this, uh, the two quantities, time and direction, uh, 
are used uh, to discriminate uh, the uh, fault. Uh, so uh, we have two figures uh, as you can see uh, figure 1 and figure 2. Well consider uh, this figure which uh, you can see uh, it shows uh, a closed ring main system. Uh, you can see that all the relays shown uh, are non-directional, uh, have the same current setting and the time lags shown. By the trial of response of the relays uh, to fault in various position on the ring main, it will be found that the proper discrimination cannot be obtained, nor uh, can this be uh, improved by uh, varying the time lags from those uh, and like uh, you can see in the figure 2 well there is a difference in figure 2 where all the relays operate with the time lags uh, shown but only uh, with the fault power uh, flowing through the relays in the directions shown by the arrow uh, trial of the effects uh, of the faults anywhere on the ring main show that a fault occurring on any section of the ring main will be discriminatively uh, cleared by the relays and there will be uh, no loss of uh, supply well uh, this is the example of the ring main system uh, you can see that uh, normally in, in the ring main system um, if uh, there is a fault occur on a one section so uh, it will uh, disturb the whole system by giving the stress uh, to the uh, other system attached to it like if we in, if we can say for the sake of example uh, we have a system ring main system and uh, five distribution transformers are connected on it so uh, if uh, there is any fault occur and uh, that transformers goes out from the system so the stress will be divided on the whole uh, other four transformers so at that time uh, the discrimination by time and direction will help us so uh, this is the third method uh, which will uh, help us to understand um, other systems like we um, study um, in our uh, uh, incoming uh, lectures like uh, when we talk about uh, uh, generation section when we talk about motor section when we talk about uh, transmission section uh, this will help so these three methods uh, uh, you can say are the basics uh, in the form of uh, uh, that we study in upcoming uh, type of different relays like distance relay directional relay and uh, loss of excitation relay so in next slide uh, we will uh, see about uh, uh, directional overcurrent relay well uh, we talk about directional overcurrent relay uh, the directional overcurrent relay uh, having ansi number is 67 uh, respond to excessive current flow in a particular direction in the power system uh, the relay uh, typically consists of two elements a directional unit and overcurrent unit uh, as we study overcurrent relay in our uh, past lecture so what we have seen that uh, uh, we didn't take uh, the direction uh, of the current in account so um, it have a big impact uh, that if the direction of the current gets changed so this relay is basically deals with the uh, direction uh, of over current relay well now about uh, construction uh, as we can say uh, see that uh, this is induction type uh, directional over current relay uh, you can see in the figure uh, a typical induction type directional over current relay basically consists of uh, two relay uh, element one is uh, directional uh, element and the um, other one is non-directional element uh, which you can also say that um, over current unit uh, 
so you can see that uh, there are coils potential coil uh, and secondly uh, that consists of directional element and on the other hand uh, on the bottom you can see there is an overcurrent element so these uh, two elements combined uh, and forms a directional uh, overcurrent uh, relay so uh, we will discuss uh, each of this unit uh, in next slide well the first uh, section of this directional overcurrent relay as from the see uh, as see from the construction site uh, you can see in the figure that the direction unit is simply a, a directional power relay that is designed to operate for fault current in only in one direction well this unit only responsible uh, for the direction uh, if you can refer from the uh, previous construction figure you can see that it is essentially uh, a directional power relay um, which operates uh, when a power flow in a specific direction uh, this part uh, basically you can see that the upper part the potential coil uh, of this element is connected through a potential transformer PT uh, that we already studied uh, the current coils of the element is energized through a CT that is uh, of, of course a current transformer by this uh, by the circuit current uh, the winding uh, well this winding uh, carried uh, over the upper uh, magnet of the non-directional element uh, the trip contacts uh, 1 and 2 as you can see from the figure uh, of the directional elements are connected in series uh, with the secondary circuit of the overcurrent element uh, therefore the later uh, element cannot start to operate until its secondary circuit is completed uh, you can say that uh, in other words uh, the directional element must operate first uh, that is uh, contacts 1 and 2 uh, in order to operate the overcurrent element that is the second one well uh, the second one is overcurrent unit or it can also uh, be termed as non-directional element well it is an overcurrent element uh, similar in all respect to a non-directional overcurrent relay uh, the spindle of the disc as you can see from the figure uh, that we uh, see the spindle of the disc uh, of this element uh, carries a moving contact uh, which closes the fixed contact uh, you can say trip circuit contacts after the operation of directional element uh, along with that uh, it may be noted that the plug setting uh, as we already uh, studied the plug setting uh, bridge is also provided in the relay uh, for the current setting uh, but has uh, been omitted in the figure uh, the tapings are provided on the upper uh, magnet of the overcurrent element and are connected to the bridge. Uh, if we talk about uh, that the plug setting uh, the, that is uh, already omitted, uh, you can see um, in the induction type uh, relays we have, uh, it have a big structure. So uh, it have a lot of mechanical elements uh, that needs to be uh, operated well uh, now discuss some its operation well under normal operating conditions uh, you can see that the power flow in the normal direction in the circuit uh, protected by the relay therefore the directional power relay upper element do not operate thereby keeping the overcurrent element lower uh, however, when a short circuit occurs, there is a tendency for the current or a power to flow in the reverse direction. So, uh, this is the ma major uh, reason behind the designing of this uh, directional overcurrent relay. Uh, you can see the disc um, uh, of this element rotates um, and the moving contact attached to it closes uh, to trip the circuit. 
this operates the circuit breaker which isolates the faulty section. Uh, as we can see, there is uh, two relay elements uh, that are arranged that the final tripping of the current controlled by them is not made till the following conditions are satisfied. Well, you can see that uh, there are two elements uh, as we can as we discuss. Uh, one is directional and other one is uh, over current elements. So what are the basic conditions uh, that needs to be satisfied uh, before this relay operate because uh, uh, two elements uh, and um, two elements are there. So we have to uh, see that which elements operate when. So the timing uh, and the match is very important. So the three conditions are uh, if we can say number one uh, that the current flow in the direction uh, such as to operate the directional element or uh, you can see the second one uh, that the current in the reverse direction exceed the preset value so uh, just see that if the current direction is reverse uh, that is not um, only uh, uh, important uh, but uh, we have to set some magnitude also so direction and magnitude both are important uh, in the third one you can see uh, that uh, excessive current persists for a period corresponding to the time setting of overcurrent element so uh, these three are the conditions uh, that need to be pre-satisfied uh, before the uh, operation of this relay if uh, these conditions are not satisfied uh, then the relay uh, will not operate uh, there is a concept uh, of over travel in uh, the induction type relays or any uh, induction type system in which disks are used um, well this is due to the inertia as uh, we know that uh, the inertia uh, of the moving parts uh, the motion will continue when uh, any actuating force is removed uh, this characteristic uh, is called uh, over, over travel uh, so uh, this over travel term is uh, used in uh, power protection system electrical power protection system so although uh, the over travel occurs in all relays uh, induction type its effect is usually important only uh, in time delay relays uh, in which we see that each and every second or millisecond is very important and particularly for inverse time over current relay where selectivity is obtained on the uh, time delay basis uh, the basis uh, for specifying uh, over travel is best described by an example. Uh, just suppose that uh, for a given adjustment uh, and at a given multiple of pickup, uh, a relay will pick up and close its contacts in two seconds. Now suppose that we make several tests. Uh, by applying that same uh, multiple uh, of uh, pickup for the time intervals slightly less than two seconds and we find that if the time interval is any longer than uh, 1.9 seconds the relay will still close and its contact we would say that uh, then uh, that of the over travel is 0.1 second uh, well, the higher the multiple of the pickup, the longer the over travel time will be. However, uh, a constant over, time, uh, over travel time of uh, approximately 0.1 second is generally assumed in the application of uh, inverse time relays. And uh, we can say uh, if we don't uh, calibrate uh, our relays, um, most uh, induction type so this problem uh, get persistent and it will increase uh, with the passage of time so we have to calibrate uh, or check our relays 
uh, on timely basis uh, to uh, avoid this uh, uh, prolonged uh, over travel uh, over travel uh, of the disk problem uh, but naturally it happens of a new relay but uh, it its time will be very low as compared to other so uh, this is the phenomena of uh, over travel that you can apply to any induction type relay well there is uh, one more example uh, uh, from the distribution system uh, to understand uh, our discrimination concept uh, in term of uh, directional overcurrent relay so uh, you can see uh, there are two system uh, in two figures uh, basically uh, there's a distribution system uh, uh, you can see in the figure one uh, that shows a system which is radial but it has two sources connected to it so if relay for protection are installed um, only at one end uh, of a transmission line say uh, towards source a uh, which is uh, of course a generating source uh, so it is obvious that after opening of relay uh, in the red uh, the fault will continue to feed from the source B. Hence, uh, relay are also installed at the other end of the line to detect the fault and disconnect transmission line from other end as well. A similar situation will exist even for a single source system as you can see in the second figure uh, which is uh, basically a source that is uh, is a system that is supplied by a single source uh, hence the system which have uh, multiple paths uh, to the source require relay at the both ends uh, however installing relays um, at the both end does not provide a complete relaying solution um, it also uh, increased our costs uh, to understand the reason uh, Consider the action of a red relay uh, you can see in figure 1 with respect to two likely fault one is uh, between point C and uh, uh, one is uh, between point P and D that is uh, fault 1 and the other one is uh, between point C and P that is F2 so uh, if the fault is at F1, then it is responsibility of the red relay to open. Well, if the fault is at F2, uh, that we can see in the figure 1, that is between C and P, then it is the green relay which should be uh, trip the line. However, uh, it is quite likely uh, that for the fault 2 that is F2 the circle red circle may trip before the circle green relays open to the uh, to disconnect feed from the source P because there are two sources um, the reason uh, being that both relays are subjected to same fault current um, in other words uh, the circle red relays completes uh, competes with the uh, circled green relay uh, to clear fault well opening of uh, circled red relay uh, unnecessarily causes loss of services uh, to the load at bus p and it should be uh, classified as wrong operation so uh, as you see uh, this is the uh, basic example of our distribution system uh, one is uh, that is uh, supplied from the uh, two sources two generation sources and one one is and that is supplied from the single sources um, uh, as we move forward in our next lectures we can uh, see that when the sources increase uh, when the generation sources increase more the system become complex with me um, because the fault can comes from uh, any side so uh, while designing the protective system we have to take care of 
uh, all these conditions. Uh, as we see in our starting uh, of the lecture, uh, the discrimination methods uh, that is discrimination by time, uh, discrimination by current magnitude and discrimination by um, time and direction. Uh, so, uh, there are some problems associated with that. Uh, well, to overcome that limitations, the relay element has to be uh, provided with uh, additional discrimination features to distinguish between faults that it should respond to. Uh, other than that, it should not, uh, uh, so we can say where to respond and where not to respond. Uh, further, uh, we can say that uh, the selectivity uh, will not be sufficient in, in that case because uh, if it based upon magnitude of the pickup current um, or fault current so that will be a problem so uh, previously uh, we had used time discrimination uh, to provide selectivity uh, as you can see in figure uh, it is apparent that such dis uh, discrimination uh, will be whole uh, relay sequence like uh, R1, R3, R5 and uh, other than that R6, R4 and R2. Uh, this type of discrimination as we discussed earlier in uh, uh, our uh, starting that is discrimination by time. However, uh, it is not possible uh, to provide such uh, time discrimination between the two relays uh, like you can see that R2 and R3. Uh, so uh, there are uh, uh, method available uh, so that we will uh, discuss in uh, next slide. Uh, so we if we ex uh, extract uh, some part uh, from the previous uh, figure uh, that you can uh, say uh, that you can uh, consider at the two possible fault location with respect to relay uh, R3 as you can see in the figure. Uh, the relay R2 uh, should uh, operate if the fault is at F1. You can see there is a fault F1 at point uh, from A to B. Uh, so if the fault is at F1 because it is on uh, primary feeder uh, but not behind and that is uh, F2 uh, with the polarity of CT connection as shown in uh, the second one uh, the second figure it is apparent that uh, for fault F1 current uh, that you can say that the I1 as shown in the figure uh, seen by the relay lags uh, VP by uh, 90 degrees well this is uh, under the uh, assumption of uh, bolted fault and reactive nature of the circuit impedance however um, when the fault um, is in the position F2 uh, then the relay current uh, leads the bus voltage VP uh, again uh, in this figure, uh, you can see the importance of uh, the directional overcurrent relay uh, that not only discrimination is enough for the system, but uh, if we uh, apply that directional overcurrent uh, relay element, so it will help us to discriminate our fault uh, and also it um, uh, by this the size um, um, the the precision uh, get improved and uh, it will um, provide uh, the system um, uh, to be operated uh, in a proper manner because on the other hand we have seen that uh, the system the whole system get stuck and stopped uh, so that is a um, totally uh, an in, uh, undesirable feature. So uh, from the last uh, previous three slides we have seen a real example of a distribution system so that uh, if the uh, fault occurs uh, however if we then discrimination method so there are also some problems 
uh, that um, we can solve with the help of uh, directional overcurrent relay uh, well that's uh, all from the directional uh, overcurrent relay unit uh, so we will discuss in details about its, its application uh, in our upcoming lectures when we discuss uh, about directional overcurrent relay uses in transmission line generation uh, so thank you